is that when you transitioned out of the teaching? No, actually, I transitioned out of teaching after my first grandson was born. Okay. I had the opportunity for early retirement. Okay. And I'd already started my coaching business, and I was excited about the possibility of doing that full-time and not having a set schedule, yeah. especially with the grandchildren coming. So I was very blessed to have that come at just the perfect time. Mm-hmm. And um, I was able to leave that schedule. So, yeah. Can you tell me what location independent means? That means I can do my work wherever I want, as long as there's internet connection and a, and a decent phone line. So I work with clients all over the world with Skype or or phone. And as I mentioned, with so many online you know, uh, tools, it's easy to put a lot of your documents online, online or on your computer. I print a PDF so that rather than printing out lots of papers so I don't have tons of things to carry around with me. Mm -hmm. And it enables me to do what I'm doing right now, spending an extended time in Bellingham with my three grandsons out here, Mm -hmm. and then going to West Virginia. I was there a few weeks ago for a couple weeks to be with my other grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to sacrifice my time with family in, in you know, because I'm working. Yes. Someplace. So I love that I can do what I love with my work and still be there with family. It creates, you know, it's a little more challenging than always being in the same place, and it's worth it. Yes. It's worth it to me. Yes, family seems to be a key priority for you, and so it was when you were um, being another, a support person at the Ronald McDonald House that you began to develop a bit more... Um, a bit more location independence or, or or adapting skills to your business and and family would that be fair? Right. Okay. Yes, I did. And and I also I also found that it was necessary for me to really take the time not only for the exercise but time for me to just be away from my daughter in the hospital and just you know find a space so I could just be and help myself get centered because it was extremely um, extremely tense because of the, his critical condition from day to day. It was mm-hmm. very, very difficult. Uh, I found it also great to connect with other people, other families at the hospital who mm-hmm. were going through similar situations, and particularly grandparents there. Mm-hmm. That, that was particularly supportive. And uh, also at the Ronald McDonald House, which if people aren't familiar with that, it's, it's supported by a McDonald's restaurant and donations, and they have them near hospitals, particularly children's hospitals, and it's a place that families who are have their children in for an extended amount of time can stay, and that way they don't have to have a hotel. It's a much more friendly environment. Yes. It's more like a house. And um, so we, it's interesting because we volunteered at one years ago, all my children and I, and then it ended up that we uh, had need for it as well. Mm-hmm. And I also found that it really needed to, when you're eating in a hospital cafeteria, you can choose healthy food if you're careful. <laughs> I made sure that I wasn't eating things that weren't healthy for me. So, so keeping your those nutritional... Were strategies that got me through that time period. Yes. And, and finally... Um, there was a situation I touched on a little bit about the Alzheimer's situation. Yes. It wasn't long after I got back to Phoenix after the extended stay in Washington that I started to see changes in my mom. She was asking me the same questions over and over. She got very confused with when to do what. She'd always been really super organized with everything on her calendar, and she was always early for appointments when I'd arrived to, to take her somewhere. One day in particular that was I felt really bad about, I, I arrived home to find many messages on my voicemail that she was waiting for me to pick her up. I knew she'd be sitting on her front porch watching for me. She always did that, and um, I just felt terrible that she went through that upsetting time, you know, worried about not getting to her appointment. She just was having trouble knowing what day it was. Hi there, my name is Nina Wallander, and I wanted to talk to you about Layers of Health. 
Layers of Health is a free online community dedicated to investigating holistic and alternative health options. These options can include physical health, mental and emotional health, business health, as well as your spiritual health. So you can join me as I discuss your health concerns with various experts, mentors, and leaders in their fields. And these interviews are offered for free live as well as during special Encore presentations. But if you find one that is particularly interesting to you, you can also purchase it. So you can join me at www.layersofhealth.com and I'll see you on the calls.